All right. Well, welcome, everyone. Welcome to our webinar. Today, we're going to talk about finances um, because, you know, the state of the world that's in, we are going through inflation. We're going through a lot of changes financially. And so we have a wonderful Dr. Art Vaughn with us today. He has been an adjunct instructor for CTU for numerous of years, and we are so thrilled to have him present on this topic. So without further ado, we should get started here. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Um, a little background about myself. Um, my undergrad degree is in fine art management with a minor in economics, my master's is in finance, and my doctorate is in higher ed from the University of Denver. So I've been always a numbers guy through my career and just going through my degrees and took the shift to higher ed, just to, the higher education was changing. So I made that change to, to be more engulfed in the changes in higher ed, but numbers are still my still my love. So this, this would be a good talk and the group is small. So I'm gonna encourage you all to, 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 to banter with me because I'm going to try to banter with you as well just because I, I don't take myself too seriously so I'll start there so it's gonna be a lot of <laughs> a lot of back and forth so if you can engage me this be a lot much more fun if we can engage each other okay hmm. topics that we will cover in this chat in this webinar credit credit cards budgeting and, and trying to live within our means, trying to live within our means. All right, credit. <clears throat> so uh, Dr. Trish, you're gonna monitor the chats. If I miss anything, you can stop me, perfect. All right, the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which ended segregation in public places and banned employment discrimination on the basis of race, color, religion, sex, or national origin, is considered one of the most considered one of the crowning legislative achievements of the civil rights movement. The Equal Credit Opportunity Act makes it illegal for a creditor to discriminate against you in any aspect of a credit transaction on the basis of your race, color, religion, national origin, sex, marital status, your age, and your perceived income from a public assistance program. But these folks can, and they do discriminate against you based on your credit. Can you think of some areas in your life where bad credit has some negative impacts? Can you think of some areas in your, in your life where having bad credit can be a, a hurdle with getting things you're trying to get done? What are some areas where bad credit can impact you? And feel free to type in the chat box. Renting, absolutely. So we're looking at areas where bad credit can impact your your day to day life. And Jackie said renting, absolutely. Anybody else? Loans, absolutely. Renting loans, is that it? Job search, absolutely. Absolutely. Mortgage loan, absolutely, Jeff, thank you. Purchasing cars, absolutely. So here are <clears throat> some areas that I come up with where bad credit can, some, some life impacts of bad credit. With regard to employment, an employer may, may pull credit to see how you handle your finances. So you're trying to work, say, in finance per se. If you can't handle your own finances, how can you manage the finances of our client? With regard to housing, you're trying to rent that apartment with bad credit, the, the, the complex or the landlord may, may seek a higher deposit or deny you outright. With regard to insurance, um, people with bad credit are deemed to be higher, higher risk for, for, for claims. So people with bad credit Pay, pay higher rates for insurance. And of course, obvious loans, people with bad credit pay higher interest rates for loans. A utility company may, may seek uh, bigger deposits, bigger down payments for starting utilities. And bad credit can impact your dating life. Who knew? So 
I am single right now. I'm looking for a wife. And here is my dating profile. I like to consider myself the, the total package because I just have all this. Going on. Use volume. I'm sorry. Um, I consider my I consider myself the, the total package. And I'll, and I'll use the term ballerific because I'm just I have it going on like an athlete because I just have great income, educated, just just the total package. So I make 200 grand per year. Highly educated. I live in a penthouse. My rent is five thousand dollars per month. Only a baller could afford that much rent. I drive a Mercedes and a Porsche. I love Versace and Louis Vuitton. I have $8,000 in credit card limit and I'm a collector of passport stamps. So the picture to the right is me uh, right in front of the Eiffel Tower. So, so based on these attributes, who, who wouldn't want to date me? Just I have, I'm bringing so much to the table here. And let me say that as, as I'm dating a woman, she is my queen. She doesn't have to work, doesn't have to, to do anything. I'll have, I'll have housekeepers. All she has to do is, is, is look pretty and pack a bag because we're taking another trip. So based, <laughs> so based on these attributes, can we agree that I'm, I'm, I'm bringing a lot to the table and I'm a, 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 a perfect candidate for the dating pool? Can, can we at least agree on that? <laughs> Yes, no, yes, no. I was doing a thumbs up. Okay, thumbs up, awesome. Well, be before I can start dating someone, though, there are a couple things that I have, um, I need to clear up first. Um, so um, I have a 400 credit score. Um, I'm also being garnished for back taxes, alimony and child support. I'm currently being evicted from my. <laughs> I'm, being, I'm currently being evicted from my penthouse. My cars, both my cars, are being repossessed. My credit cards are past due and over the limit. My passport is being revoked because of my back taxes, alimony, and child support. And I'm about to file bankruptcy. Um, so, so based based on this, is my is my true picture. Is it problematic for anybody? Is my is my real picture problematic for me trying to date somebody? Is, is this is this is this a problem in me trying to date or or enter into a relationship? Is this problematic? My real picture. Marcus says yes. Can you expand on that, Marcus? Why? What's the, what's the problem? You can type or take yourself off of mute, whichever is easiest. Anyone? I would say, um, you know, about to file bankruptcy, that could be a huge challenge of trying to um, create a life together. Like, Okay, so you have bankruptcy that's going to be on file for several years, and then you have to wait a really long time for that to clear off of your credit. So I'll, I'll pick on Trish since she's the one talking. So Trish, if you and I are going to start a relationship, all, all I'm asking from you as my potential partner is that I, I move into your apartment or your house, you co-sign the car for me, I get on your credit cards, I just need maybe four to five to six years of help me get back on my feet and we can start start our, our romance in the right direction. I just need a little help from you to get back on my feet, five or six years or so, and then we can <laughs> we can start we can start the relationship. Any any problem with that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would find it to be hard because you know because of past history, you know, living beyond your means. Are you going to continue with that same behavior? If I'm going to co-sign for anything, am I going to have the ability to, to rein this in a little bit so that way the spending doesn't get out of control? So. Certainly, Jackie, the girlfriend would suddenly become responsible for your past debts. You know, possibly. Um, again, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'm just trying to get on, get on, get on my feet. I had a, 
couple dips in the past. I'm just trying to get back on my feet, Jackie. But I'm I'm good for it, and I, I promise I'll be I'll be good to, to Trish if we if we work out. <laughs> so that, so of course this is all fictitious, and the idea here is that if I can't uh, a, a, a a relationship is a, is a partnership, right? And and what am I bringing to the table if with with all with all these all these issues in my in my financial profile, if I can't take care of myself. How can I be a partner for somebody else with with all these issues going on in my credit file? And that that's the, that's the idea here. I'm, I'm more of a liability to Trish than I would be as a as a partner. Can can we agree on that? Can we agree on that? Yep. <laughs> all right. Credit is the ability to borrow money or access goods or services with the understanding that you'll pay, you'll pay later. Lenders, merchants, service providers, known as creditors, grant credit based on their confidence you can be trusted to pay back what you borrow along with any finance charges that may apply. To the extent that creditors consider you worthy of their trust, you are said to be credit worthy or to have good credit. In centuries past, creditors might have gauged your credit worthiness by reputation alone. This method was subjective, subjective and prone to error, manipulation, and bias. These days, creditors prefer a more objective approach. In the United States, they typically look at your credit history, your record of borrowing and repaying funds as a first step in determining whether to issue or not to issue you credit. So what's your track record of of paying folks back is what they look at as far as should we issue this person person credit. Information on your credit report includes the number of credit card accounts you have, their borrowing limits, and any outstanding balances, the amounts of any loans you've taken out, and how much of them you paid back, whether your monthly payments for your accounts were made on time, later missed altogether, more severe financial setbacks such as mortgage foreclosures, repossessions, and bankruptcies. Four types of credit, the revolving credit card, the charge card, service credit, and installment credit. The revolving credit card is at Capital One, MasterCard, or Visa. You have a $5,000 balance. You charge some, pay some, charge some, pay some. You can, you can either pay some of the balance or pay the whole thing off at one time. Only up to you. The credit revolves. The charge card is, a, is an account that you pay the, the entire balance off each month. If you charge $1,000, you pay $1,000 each month. Your, your cell phone bill, your cable bill, your electricity bill, those are all service credits. It can also impact your credit if you don't pay them. Installment loans, your car, your mortgage, your boat, jet skis, those are installment loans. True story, when I was 19, I had the, the, the old green American Express card. Uh, I allowed one of my relatives to, to get on the card with me. That relative uh, charged up $4,000 on that card. American Express closed my account, cut up the card, and I had to settle with them on the balance. That was when I was 19. 30 years later, and this is a true story, American Express will not touch me for a mistake I made when I was 19. Um, my, my, <laughs> I've been, I, my, my financial picture is a lot stronger now at 52 than it was at 19, but they will not touch me for a mistake I made when I was 19. I'm not bitter. I am bitter. I'm not bitter. But that is a true story that I cannot get an American Express card for a mistake I made over 30 years ago. Over 30 years ago. That's a true story. Questions so far? How are we doing? And feel free to type in the chat if that's easier for some of you. I know some people are at work, so it's okay to type in the chat. I mean, again, <laughs> I thought the small group we'd have a little more banter going on, ideally. How are we doing? I think we're still doing good here. And feel free to have any questions at all throughout this entire presentation. All right. 
I think you're good, Art. Moving on. Credit cards. <clears throat> Again, like back, back with credit, a credit card gives you the opportunity to buy something now and pay for it later. You can pay for your items, item, items, and one lump sum, or pay them off over time. Finance charges may apply. Here is my credit card. I have a $10,000 credit card balance and I'm paying 25% interest. So credit card, the credit card calculator says at $10,000, 25% interest rate, I'm paying 225 per month. Based on these inputs, the 10 grand, 25% interest and 225 per month, it will take me 127 months over 10 years to pay off that credit card. More troubling is that I will pay over $18,000 in interest. Sorry, 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 sorry. Can I go back? I pay over $18,000 in interest on that $10,000, almost, almost double, more than double what I almost double um, what I charge. I'm going to pay 18 grand and interest. So here are some strategies to pay your credit card off sooner. Double up on the payments, of course. Pay more than the minimum. Call the bank and ask them to reduce the rate. Maybe seek a part-time job and use that part-time job money to pay off the credit card. Consolidate those debts into one payment and, of course, stop using it. Um, how, many, how many credit cards are you all holding? How many credit cards are in your person or on your person? I don't, I don't need to know what bank, what balances. How many credit cards are, are y'all holding on your person? One, Jackie, one, Jeff. Two, I'm sorry, two, Jeff. Trish, two. <laughs> one, John. How often will the bank reduce the rate? All, you know, all they, all they can say is no. You can ask them, say, hey, it's hard in these streets in Biden's America. Can you please reduce my rate from whatever to whatever? All they can say is no. And you know, I, I use Biden's America as an excuse. Pick, pick any excuse. Uh, my hours were cut. Um, whatever's going on, they, they can, all they can say is no. They, all they can say is no, Marcus. Um, so the next question, are these, do these cards hold balances? Are you carrying a balance month over month over month? Or do you pay them all off every single month? Zero, John. I love it. <laughs> Zero, Dr. Craig. I love it. I love it, Henriette. Is that Henriette? I love that. So think of the credit card company like the casino. If you are carrying a balance month over month over month, you are losing because the credit card company is, is making a killing. As we can see here, on my credit card balance. I, I borrowed $10,000. It's going to take me over 10 years. I'm 52. And I'll be in my mid-60s still paying off that, that dinner I had 10 years ago, that vacation I took eight years ago. I'm still paying it off 10 years later. And again, the $18,000 in interest. So let's look at what happens if we add just 100 bucks to that payment. So the same 10 grand. 25% interest rate, I'm now paying 325. That knocks the pay, the funds to pay off from 127 down to 50. 50 months is about four years, four, four years and change. And look at the look at the interest reduction. It was 18 grand here, down to down to six grand with just a simple extra hundred dollars per month over, over the regular payment in the chat. Thank you, Trish. Yeah, absolutely. That is a <laughs> that is a that is a monster difference between 18 grand to, to six grand. All right. All right. Budgeting. Budgeting. So question for the group. How do you all budget your money right now? What, what, are you, what are your budgeting strategies? What do you all 
how do you budget your money? What do you, what do you all do? What, what apps do you use or are you pencil on paper? What do you use to budget your money? Spreadsheets, Trish. Excel, Shamika, I love that. Spreadsheets, Jeff, thank you. Jackie, I currently do not budget. <laughs> okay. And again, this is a safe space. I'm not, I'm not, uh, it's a safe space in a judgment-free zone. Any any reason why, Jackie, you don't budget? Is it what what's what's going on? There's no need to budget? Because you're so ballerific, you don't need to budget. You have so much coming in, there's no need to budget. <laughs> no time to budget. Looking for new and improved ways and suggestions are welcome. All right, Jeff, we'll, we'll talk, uh, sorry, Jeff, not Jeff, John, we'll talk about that. Totally ballerific, we just don't take the two. <laughs> I love that, Jackie. <laughs> All right, a budget is a spending plan based on income and expenses. In other words, it's just an estimate of how much money you'll make and spend over a certain period of time, such as a month or a year. Budgeting can involve making a comprehensive list of expenditures or focusing on a few categories. Some people prefer to write their budgets out by hand while others use a spreadsheet or budgeting app. There is no correct way to budget. What works for one person may not work for another. Let's try the 50, 30, 20 budget as the best way to spend our money responsibly. The 50-30-20 rule divides your take-home pay into three categories, 50% for needs, 30% for wants, and 20% for savings and debt repayment. This budget is perfect for those who need rules but don't like fine details. It does require a tracking of spending and a commitment to savings, and a commitment to savings. <clears throat> 50% of your income on needs. Necessities are the expenses you can't avoid. This portion of your budget should cover costs such as housing, food, transpo, basic utilities, insurance, minimum loan payments. Anything beyond the minimum goes into the savings and debt repayment bucket. 50% of your income on your needs. 30% of your income on your wants. Distinguishing between your wants and needs isn't always easy and can vary from one budget to another. Generally, wants are the extras that aren't essential to living and working. They often include fun and may include monthly, monthly subscriptions, your, your Netflix, your Hulu, your Amazon Prime, any travel, entertainment, any entertainment, any meals out. Distinguishing between your wants and your needs isn't always easy. I was in Paris two times over the summer and I happened across this Louis Vuitton horizontal soft duffel bag. I, I had to have it and it was only $3,250. <laughs> only $3,250. We're talking about wants and needs. I needed this bag because I had to be ballerific in the airport. You see anything wrong with this picture as I had to have this $3,000 duffel bag? Anything wrong with this picture you all see? Couldn't afford it, Henriette. Well, Henry, I, I charged it, so we're, we're fine there. I, I put it on my charge cards. So we're, we're fine. Oh, so the what's available is after the transaction. You don't have enough money for the rest. No, no, no. This is, this is my savings balance. So I, I, <laughs> I, put the, I put the bag on my credit card, and this is my, what's in my savings account. The six, the six dollars is what I have in savings. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It just looks like you're living beyond your means. Huh. 
seemed like Trish was being a hater. I had to have, <laughs> I had to have, I had to have this bag because I had to be ball ripping in the, in the airport. Go ahead, Mike. Oh, Mike, did you mean to put yourself on mute? Maybe not. Or were you going to say something, Mike? I think he meant to put himself on mute. Sorry, Art. Go ahead. That's fine. He may be beyond his means, but he looks fantastic with that's what I'm talking about, Jeff. I look fantastic in this bag, even though, even though I have six bucks in savings. And what happens if something goes wrong? I need, I need new tires for my car. There's a medical emergency. <laughs> Can I use that bag to pay for my emergency? So what I've done here, I have lived way beyond my means and I've 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 distinguished my my needs and wants and may have some my my priorities might be my, my priorities may not be in the right place. Clearly. Clearly. Uh, Twenty percent of your income on savings and debt. Savings is the amount you put away to prepare for the future. Devote this portion of your income to paying down existing debt and creating a comfortable financial cushion to avoid taking on future debt. How exactly to use this part of your budget depends on your situation, but would likely include starting that emergency fund. I'd say three to six months of salary put away just in case there's an emergency. Saving for retirement through a 401k or perhaps an individual retirement plan. Paying off debt, beginning with the toxic high interest type of debt. Those credit cards, those payday loans are high interest and toxic type of debt. So let's get started. How do we get started with, with our budget? So what I did, I looked at my expenses for the last 30 days. I went through my, my app of my on my on my phone, my banking app on my phone, and I looked at my expenses for the last 30 days. Come to find out, I have fast food four times a week. I tracked that out over a year. That's over $1,900 in fast food meals. I smoke two packs of cigarettes a week. At, at, this is at 10 bucks a pack. It's almost $1,000 in cigarettes. I have Starbucks three times a week almost 700, over $700 in Starbucks. And I love to play the lottery. I only, I only devote 50 bucks a week in lottery tickets. At some point I'm going to win. It's just, I'm just, it's taking time to get there. Um, but so I'm, I'm over, over $6,000 in expenses that I can't control. And I wonder every month, why am I always broke? Where's my money going? And it took me to, to, to look at my, my, my account and it's like, here's where my money is going. If how many groceries can you buy at the Kroger or the Aldi or the Piggly Wiggly for $1,900? How many groceries can I buy for $1,900? <laughs> Absolutely, Trish. <clears throat> and I, I am by no means not saying not to live your best life, right? But the fast food is expensive. Cigarettes are is an expensive habit and it's unhealthy. I can I can drink coffee at home and maybe Starbucks once a week versus three times a week. And lottery tickets, someone's going to win the lottery more times than not. It's not going to be you, right? So that's that's fifty bucks a week that I could have in savings that I'm I'm giving to the state of Colorado. And and more times than not, I'm not going to win. I'm not going to hit that that lottery, right? So here's here's over six thousand dollars that I've I won't say wasted, but six thousand dollars I could have put into into much better places. I as I have nothing in savings, but I have six thousand dollars to to McDonald's and Chick Fil A and Chipotle and Qdoba, my cigarette habit, my Starbucks habit, my lottery tickets. I have some some reckless spending here is where where, where my money is going. Health insurance does go up does go up for those who smoke. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. So I did create a budget. <clears throat> so my, my, real, my real situation is this. I make $6,000 per month. I live in this 
deluxe apartment in the sky. If you're 40 plus, you'll catch that reference. My rent is 2,500 bucks a month. My groceries 500, utilities 300. My cable internet package is 450 per month. I have to have the baller package. I have to have Hulu, Netflix, Showtime, all the shows. I can't, I can't miss anything. I can't miss anything. So I have to have all the channels. Gas for my car is 500 bucks a month. My car insurance is 125. My car loan is 500. There are those lottery tickets again. I dine out a lot, $300. I get money to my family, 300 bucks. Have to be fresh in those streets. So $500 on clothes and shoes. My dry cleaning, because I can't iron myself. I have to have somebody else do it for me, 200 bucks. $100 for donations. $500 for entertainment. And my credit card bill is $300 a month. I make $6,000 a month. My expenses are $73.25. I have a $1,300 deficit at the end of every single month. My question for the group, do I have, <laughs> do I have an income problem or do I have a spending problem? Do I have an income problem or do I have a spending problem? On top of that, should my, <laughs> here's hater Trish, once again, should my income be in line with my spending or should my spending be in line with my income? Should my income be in line with my spending or should my spending be in line with my income? Here's Jeff, spending in line with my income. So again, here's Jeff telling me to, to live within my means. I make six grand a month, so I need to live like I'm living on six grand a month. My current situation, I'm living like I make, you know, almost seven grand a month, over seventy over seventy five hundred dollars per month, and I'm I'm totally strapped at the end of every month. I'm I'm borrowing money from here to pay this. I I guess the term is borrowing from Peter to pay Paul. I I am struggling in these streets because my my spending is out of control. So let's look at a, a more in, intact budget. So what I did, I made some changes. I moved from the deluxe apartment to a more, to more modest apartment. My rent went down to 1850. I've cut back on groceries. I've cut back on cable and internet. I, I'm driving less, staying home more. I cut back on gas. My car insurance is the same, car loans the same, utilities about the same. Cut back money to my family. I'm, I'm dining out less. I'm dry cleaning less. Donations, entertainment, about the same. I cut my entertainment budget down some. Credit cards the same. And my clothes and shoes budget, I've cut that back as well. So now, at my $6,000 income, my bills are $47.25. I have a, we'll call it a $1,300 surplus. I have a $1,300 surplus at the end of the month. So question for the group, what can I do with this extra $1,275 every single month? What can I do with this extra $1,300 every single month? Any ideas? What can I do with this extra money? Put in savings, Shamika. I love that. Invest it, Henrietta. I love that. What else can I do with this extra money? Savings, Jeff. I like that. So I have a, I'm rounding up. I have a, I have $1,300. Looking at my, looking at my current bills, <laughs> where else can I allocate some of that money? And, and, and your, your answers aren't incorrect. Savings and investing are, are, are great answers. But what, uh, check out the big brain on Jackie. I, <laughs> I love that. Look, start, start paying off that debt. What interest rate, what return are you getting on your savings account, right? And on my, on my Chase savings, I'm getting 0.01% back as a return, but I'm paying Capital One 25% interest. So it would make sense to start using some of that extra money to pay off that credit card or to start paying off that, paying off that car a little bit faster. And your answers aren't wrong. Savings, yes. Investing, yes. Well, let's let's pay off these these high interest loans. It's just to have more money, have more money in our pockets. If we pay off that credit card that's saving me 
25% of my money just right there by paying off that credit card sooner than later, sooner than later. But your answer is not wrong. Savings, absolutely. Invested, absolutely. On top of that, let's pay off, <laughs> let's pay off that debt. Pay off that debt. <clears throat> Here are some budgeting mistakes. Should your budget be the same every single month or should your budget change month over month? Should your budget be the same every month or should your budget change month over month over month? I think for me, it changes. I have kids that are <laughs> in activities. <laughs> when your income is the same, why, why would your budget change month over month? activities that the kids are in soccer sometimes the cost goes up child care sometimes can go up as well so sometimes like during the summer it will dip a little bit um but during the school year the costs seem to go up I'm like oh what else do i have to pay for <laughs> <laughs> what how else many, did this week <laughs> how many of you all overspent at Christmas. Christmas was three months ago. How many of you all overspent on Christmas? Again, this is a judgment-free zone. If you did, I'm just, I'm just throwing out questions. How many of you all <laughs> overspent on Christmas? Dr. Trish, totally Jackie. <laughs> now, here, here's the thing. Christmas is on the same day every single year. So if we're, if we're planning, if we're budgeting, we can start putting away money every month between now and say October, November, and then when December rolls around, we have a we have a a a some cash stacked away that we've been saving all month. That instead of instead of spending it all in in one month in December, so again, we should start planning for Christmas right now, even though it's nine months away. But we know when it's coming, so why not start preparing for that right now? So to my question, is our budget the same every single month? Absolutely, <laughs> Christmas clubs, Jeff. I like that. Um, our budget should change month over month because our expenses change month over month. And Dr. Trish said it with kids, soccer and birthdays, and we're going to do Mother's Day in May, Father's Day in June. We're going to spend a little bit more at Thanksgiving with, with in November for Thanksgiving. So month over month, our budget is going to change based on what we have coming on. So mistake number one is keeping the same budget every single month. Consistency is great when it comes to budgeting. After all, you want to be realistic about your spending habits or trying to make them fit into your lifestyle. However, not taking into account on how your spending changes each month is a recipe for disaster. Again, we should be planning out December right now in March because we know Christmas is coming. We know the kids, and Dr. Trish, how many kids are we talking about? I have two kids, a nine-year-old and a six-year-old. Young kids as well. So there's there's Playstations, there's Xboxes, there's, <laughs> there's stuff that we have to buy. Um, then there's birthdays in there as well. So we should be planning for this now and not waiting until December. Mistake number two. Give it up too soon. Of course, it's tempting to want to see the results immediately when it comes to your finances, but just how it can take you time to notice the negative effects of your spending habits. It will also take some time to reap the benefits of changing those habits. So stay the course. Stay the course. It takes time to see the benefits of your budget. Was it Jackie who said, I, I don't budget? Was it Jackie? What if you are in a place where the cost of living is high and the wages are low? How do you make a budget work? That is an awesome, awesome question. Jackie's saying, it is hard in these streets. How do I budget when everything, <laughs> how do I budget when in Biden's America, everything is so expensive? I love that. So, so let's go back to the, to the question. Should my income match my spending or should my spending match my income? If you're, if you are check to check or if you're not making it month over month, something has to change. Either you have to cut back on your expenses or Maybe get a part-time job. I've always worked multiple jobs and it's, it's always helped me to, to save a little bit more, to budget a little better just by having multiple streams of income has been the has been the, the deal for me. And again, at 52, my kids are growing out the house. That's been 
that's been another another thing. My kids are grown, and it doesn't take them. From, it doesn't that doesn't mean that they're out of my pocket. They still they still are, but be, them being out of the house, my expenses have gone down dramatically. Where we live, you literally can barely afford rent on a listen. And if you don't mind me asking, Jackie, what part of the country are you in? You don't mind me asking? If you do, that's fine. I Grand Forks, North Dakota. So I, I've always worked a part-time job. Even even at, even with a doctorate, I was working at a part. I was working part-time in the mall at a luggage store, selling luggage, and it was okay. And <laughs> so between you and your partner. Neither, neither of you can work a part-time job? Just time doesn't permit? Is that what I'm hearing? You don't have a partner. Okay, yeah, that's, wow, okay. <laughs> I would, <clears throat> then that, that, that's where it, what comes in. Do you have a support system? Parents, grandparents, cousins, any family member that can maybe help out as far as maybe, get, maybe getting a roommate if possible? And again, I'm, 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 I'm grasping for straws here. So I don't, I don't know your entire situation. Um, but again, part-time job, uh, Trish. Yeah. That's sometimes that helped me. Like when I, I kind of know where, where Jackie is coming from. Like sometimes, especially if you already have a demanding job and you just like, I just want to get a good night's sleep too and not have a side job. But yeah, so roommates sometimes do help, but you do have a kid. Sometimes even too, like if you have family members that are around, sometimes that might be helpful as well. You do see a lot of people moving back in with family um, mm -hmm. again. So um, even in my neighborhood, there are multiple families living in a house, which I don't think is quite ideal in some cases. Oh, so, okay. So your closest family. There, yeah. there are some things that... Um, and I know what art is also talking about too, like side gig work that is very popular these days. So sometimes some people don't realize some of their skill sets that they have, like fiverr.com. It's uh, I'll type it in the chat box too. Um, so if you do have like a skill set, maybe you're really good at brushing up on resumes, or maybe you're really good at cover letters and, or maybe you're good at one specific thing, that might be a really good avenue to go, um, to, to make some extra income. Because unfortunately in a lot of situations, some people they're in that, that predicament where it's kind of hard to, especially if you have a child, like you were saying, Jackie, it is kind of hard to have a, an additional job that takes you outside of the home. And then you have to find childcare and the cost of that childcare. So there are some opportunities online like fiber and there are other sites as well, where you can do some site gig work too, because with kids, you never know, they end up getting sick, things happen, and we want to be prepared for that. That was awesome, Trish. Thank you for that. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's tough, Jackie. And I, I, I get it. I, I totally get it. So, and, I, and I've been there, so I'm not, not judging at, at all. Mistake number three, not writing it down, not writing it down. Studies have shown time and time and time and time again that writing down your goals cements them in your brain and sets you up for success. A budget is no different. After all, it's just a monthly set of goals. <clears throat> as, as adults, there's so much going on between jobs and kids and school and work and social life. There's so much going on. And just having a having your goals written down, your budget written down, just it, 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 it makes buzzing that much easier, that much easier. Mistake number four, making your budget too stringent. It's easy to go a bit overboard when first creating a the budget. There's that drive to be perfect and to save as much as possible. So you may end up finding yourself setting some unrealistic goals. So again, if your, your food budget is $500, you wouldn't want to go into a new budget, start allotting $200. You'd be realistic about what your spending habits. Maybe cut that down from $500 to maybe $450, right? And, and Dr. Trish has two kids. I can imagine that the refrigerator is open all the time. What's, what's to eat? What's to eat? What's to eat? I can only imagine. Um, but yeah, set yourself up realistic goals when, when starting that budget. 
Last mistake, number five, we're going wiggle room. No one is perfect and you can't expect that every single month your budget will walk without a hitch. That's why you need to allot a certain amount of wiggle room in your budget. So if you fall off track, you're not totally derailed. It's okay to splurge once in a while. We're all human. Just make sure there's space in your space in it for your space for it in your budget. Last thing I have, I think. <laughs> If you can't manage your finances making 30 grand, you won't be able to manage your finances making 100 grand. You suddenly don't learn how to manage, handle money by amassing more of it. Financial literacy is not a side effect of wealth. Wealth is a side effect of financial literacy. Now, this, this, this is contrary to what Jackie was saying. Jackie is just saying, I just can't make it based on my, my current situation. And I, I'm, what I'm hearing, maybe in a sense, if I had more money, Things would be things would be different. Is that is that fair, Jackie, to say? If there's more income coming in, you would be in a, a much different place. And your situation is is unique, or or just I mean I I get it. Kids and that one job just not just not just not getting it done. Um, I don't know anything about North Dakota. What, what's the cost of living like there? I I don't, I don't know anything about North Dakota. Anything at all. So housing, I, I assume it's expensive. Could could you move closer to family? How, would, would that be a possibility? I mean, again, I'm just throwing out throwing out ideas. Again, the idea here is that <clears throat> financial literacy is not a side effect of wealth, wealth is a side effect of <laughs> financial literacy. It's even really rural here. Moving closer to family is even, even more ruler. Ruler. Yep. So, and I, I grew up in a rural part of Iowa where there isn't much in terms of opportunity for um, higher salaries. Um, so I think Jackie, if you even like move to a place that's even more remote than what you are right now, it might be probably a challenge, but I would probably, you know, even consider maybe remote positions, you know, that are outside of the state that might be helpful too, to kind of start looking at even remote positions where you could do it from home more oftentimes. You do have a remote position. Okay. Nice. Well, there are more remote positions that are becoming, you know, very much available, which is good. Wait, you know, before the pandemic, it was not as easy sometimes to get a remote position, but I think these days it's a little bit easier. You know, Jackie, I, if I were you, and again, I, I get it, I would start just writing everything down. Where's where's my money going? And I, I know you're saying that I'm, I'm, I'm check to check, I'm barely making it. Just see where the money's going, right? And maybe maybe it's a, a cheaper place, or maybe it's a, a you know shop for different car insurance, or just maybe just these different areas which will save a couple bucks here, a couple bucks there, to give you a little more breathing room. I mean, if, if I mean you have a remote position, which is good, um, yeah, just different different ideas that help you help you get have some a little more breathing room in your finances. All right, that is all that I have. Are, are, the, are there any questions, comments, or concerns for me? And, and I appreciate the banter and the feedback. I appreciate the you all sharing, Jackie especially. Any questions or comments for me? All right, awesome. I appreciate you all showing up for this. There's my contact information. I'm, I love talking about this stuff. I love it. I love it. I love it. Here's my contact information, my school email. Thank you, John. Uh, my, and my phone number, feel free at any time. Give me a call. We can talk about stuff. <laughs> I'm open to, I'm open to talking. And here is the link to the, to the survey. Some feedback would be great. How, where, where I can be better if I ever do this again. I appreciate you all. Thank you very much. Have a great day. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Art Bond. Really appreciate your time. And thank you for everybody uh, for joining us 
for today's webinar.